In this video, let me show you how to create an interactive sidebar menu with open and close functions using Adobe Animate. Follow along in this tutorial and learn how to import an Illustrator file to animate, add classic tween animation to the sidebar, and set up button interactivity to open and close the menu. So let's jump right into this video and get started. I'm in Adobe Animate now, and the first step is to create a new file for our project. So I'm going to click on New File. In the New Document window, click on the Web tab, and let's set the width to 2160. Hit your Tab key, and let's set the Height field to 1620. These are the dimensions of an iPad screen. Down below, ensure that the frame rate is set to 30, and under Platform Type, choose HTML5 Canvas. Once you have those settings, go ahead and click Create. And you can see on my screen here, we now have the canvas for our project. We're gonna be importing an Adobe Illustrator document, so let's jump over to Illustrator and have a look at the design. Here's the artboard in Illustrator that we'll be importing to the stage in Adobe Animate. Let's have a quick look at the layers. I have an Open button, that's the arrow icon. I have an X icon for the Close button, and the menu shape is the entire green rectangle and the contents within that make up the sidebar. There's also a content layer that has the entire design in the background. It's important that you have all the layers on separate layers when you're importing to animate. This just makes the animation process much more seamless. Let's jump back over to animate and get started. Now that we've looked at the Illustrator document, let's import it to the stage. To do that, go up to File, and choose Import, Import to Stage. Locate the Illustrator file, here it is here, Digital Slide, and click Open. In the Import to Stage window, what I like to do is collapse all the layers, so you can see the layers that you're importing. And you can see the ones that we want are checked on, Open button, Close button, Menu Shape, and Content. Also ensure that Place Objects at Original Position is selected, and you can see here an incompatibility report. Go ahead and click that. This will resolve any incompatibilities from Illustrator to Animate. You could see space after paragraph and an effect, a grain effect that I had in the design. Go ahead and resolve those and click OK. Once you have all those settings in place, you can click Import. Next, we'll add the animation to the sidebar menu, but first we'll need to convert it to a symbol. So let's click on the menu shape in the layer and then click on the shape itself. Now there are two ways to convert this to a symbol. You can go up to modify, convert to symbol, or you can right click and then choose convert to symbol. Either one works. Let's change the symbol name to main menu and ensure that the type is set to movie clip. Everything else is fine. So go ahead and click okay. Now that the sidebar menu has been converted to a symbol, we can double click to drive into its own timeline. This is where we can add a classic tween to add the animation. So we can actually right click the layer and choose create classic tween. Let's move the playhead to the 10 frame mark and press F6 on your keyboard to add a keyframe. Alternatively, you can also click this icon here to insert a keyframe. Let's move the playhead to the 20 frame mark and do the same thing. Press F6. Then we could do one more at the very end, the last frame, press F6. So we have four keyframes in this sequence and let's move the playhead to the very beginning. In this sequence, I want to move the entire sidebar menu to the left. So we can click and drag it to the left off the stage. Just like that is fine. Now if I scrub through, you can see that it will move back into position. So there's our first animation right there. And it'll stay that way until the very end. And at this point, I want it to go back. So we could do the same thing and move it off to the left. But the easier way is just clicking that first frame, right click, and let's copy the frames. Move the playhead to the very last frame, click that one, then right click it and paste the frames. So now we have this, if I press return, it comes in and out, in and out. So that's our open and close interaction. However, we'll need to add two stop actions to this so it doesn't loop when it's published. For this, we'll need to create another layer in this timeline. So click new layer, 
and let's rename this to actions. Our first stop action will happen at the very beginning. So click that first frame. And for this, we'll need to use the actions panel. I have mine docked on the right side here. If you're not seeing it, you can find it under window and then actions. I'm gonna open mine up here and I want to add using wizard here. The select an action, the action we want here is to stop. We wanna apply it on this timeline and then click next. And we want the triggering event to happen with this frame. Go ahead and click finish and add. Now you'll know that the action has been applied because you'll see a little A symbol over the frame. Good. Let's move the playhead to the 20 frame mark and do the same thing. Only this time we'll have to add a keyframe. In the actions layer, press F6, go back to actions, and then we'll add using wizard. We'll add a stop action. With this timeline, click next. With this frame, finish and add. Good, we've added both our stop actions here so it won't stop and it won't loop when it's published. Remember, we're adding button interactivity to control this. We don't want it to play on its own. Once you've set that up, you can click this arrow here to go back to scene one. Next, let's convert both buttons into symbols. We'll start with the open button. So that's this arrow here. Go ahead and click that. Modify, convert to symbol. We'll call this open button. And for this, of course, we want it to be a button. Click OK. Let's do the same thing for the close button. Now, because it's behind the open button, you may need to turn this layer off. Just turn it off. Then we can click on the X and do the same thing. Modify, convert to symbol. And this will be called close button. Ensure the type is set to button and then click OK. We can go ahead and turn on the open button again. Now they've both been converted to symbols, but they need to have instance names in order to assign the action to open and close the sidebar menu. So for this, let's click on open button first in the layers in the timeline. And then in the properties panel, under the object tab, you could see it has the instance of open button, but we need to add an instance name. For this, let's call the instance open btn. Let's do the same for close. Click on the close layer, go back to object, and this instance name will be close btn. Now we'll also need to have an instance name for the sidebar menu. So let's click that. You can either click the object itself or the layer in the timeline. And remember we called this symbol main menu. We'll give this an instance name of sidebar menu. Next, let's add another layer at the very top of the layer stack. So click open button and then add a new layer. And this will be called actions once again. This is where we're gonna add the open and close interactivity. So with the actions layer selected, let's go back to the actions panel and add using wizard. This time we're gonna choose a play action and the object on which to apply the action is the sidebar menu. So click that and then click next. We want this to be on mouse click event and then choose the button you want to have this triggered to. And in this case, it's the open button, open BTN. Go ahead and click finish and add. You can see our first line of code is in here. There are some comments that you can remove. They're optional. We'll leave them in for now. I'm going to place my cursor underneath the first set of code there. And we're gonna do the same thing for the close button. Add using wizard. We'll add a play action to trigger the sidebar menu. Click next. We want on mouse click event. And in this case, we'll choose close BTN and then finish and add. To test this out, you can go up in the upper right hand corner and click test movie, this little play icon, click that, and that will launch right in your web browser. Let's take a quick look. 
Here's the project launched in my Chrome browser and I can click on the open button. You'll see that the sidebar menu appears and we can click it again to close it. The only issue here is I want to toggle between the open and close when this sidebar menu is animated. Let me show you how that works. In this next part, we'll be adding event listener click events to create visibility actions for the buttons. So let's start by adding another variation, VAR, and let's call it sim for symbol equals this with a semicolon. Press return a couple times and let's add our event listener. So this dot open BTN, remember that's our open button, dot add event listener, create a bracket and then create quotes and let's type in click. Press your arrow key and then press comma space and let's call this function hide open because when we click that open button we want it to hide add another semicolon press return a couple times now let's add our function so function and the function name is hide open create brackets again press your right arrow key and add a curly bracket press return a couple times and now we'll add the visibility Let's type SYM symbol dot open BTN dot visible space equals false semicolon. So when you press the open button, we want it to disappear. That equates to false. So press return and let's add our second SYM dot close BTN dot visible equals true semicolon. Now it's as simple as copying this code, command C or control C on Windows, press return a couple times and paste it again. We're just gonna change a few things. For example, we wanna change the first instance from open to close. We also wanna change the function name because you can't have two of the same function names. So when we click the close button, we wanna show the open button. So let's call this show open. Change the function name here also to show open. And the last thing we're gonna do is just swap the false and true. So the first instance will be true and the second will be false. Once you have that, your code is done. We can go ahead and test this out. Let's get a final look. I refresh the project in the web browser. I can click the open icon to open the sidebar menu and click the close button to close it. Thanks for watching and I hope you can use these tips in your next Adobe Animate project. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Animate and how to use it as a digital marketing tool, check out the playlist above. Until next time, take care and keep creating.